Hello, everyone. My name is Fei Song. Today, I'm going to present the work Spark-based cloud data analytics using multi-objective optimization. It is a work by me and my colleagues, Halid Zhaok, Cheng Haolu, Arnav Xinha, Qi Fan, Yan Lei Diao, Hersheng Xinoi from Ecola Polytechnic and UMass Amherst. First, let's look at an use case. There is a user who wants to run a SQL task. And there is another one who wants to run a machine learning task. They both submit their task to a cloud environment, such as Amazon EC2. There are a lot of instance types differs in cluster option, such as number of cores, memory size. Also, there are Spark runtime parameters to be set, like the number of executors parallelism ETC. For each task, there will be some important performance objectives such as latency, throughput, and cost. These objectives depend on the cluster option and the Spark runtime parameter. Together, we call them as configuration. Currently, it is often a human expert who set up this configuration based on their experience and domain knowledge. Also, it is only best effort only without any performance guarantee, especially when multiple objectives present so it is important to have a data analytics optimizer to automate the configuration selection and meet the user requirements for these objectives. To be a good data analytics optimizer, we think it has to be capable of two things. The first is broad data analytics. It means that it can support diversified tasks, such as SQL jobs, machine learning jobs. The key issue here is a predict performance prediction model. Given a configuration, the model can predict the performance objectives. There are manually tuned and learning-based models, and our optimizer can work together with these existing models. The second one is our focus, the multi-objective optimization. It means to automatically select a configuration that can optimize multiple objectives at the same time. We will use this running example throughout our, our presentation. In this example, the x-axis is the latency, the y-axis is the cost, or the number of cores. As we can see in this plot, each point represents a different trade-off between latency and the cost. Different users may have different preference. We will define the MO problem and its solution later on. For now, we can think that we should do is to provide all these options to the user. So we develop our own data analytics optimizer, UDAL. Given the workload to run, the resource, the objectives, the ML modular, and the model modular will work together. The result is a set of potentially good configuration for user to select. We call it Preto Frontier. The next step is to select a configuration and deploy it. Let Spark run. We further collect the running result and provide it to the model to improve the model accuracy. In this work, our contributions are three parts. First, a theoretical framework to transform a MO problem to a set of constraint optimization problems. Second, progressive frontier algorithms. Third one, we do extensive experiments comparison and analysis. Now we define the MO problem. First, Pareto optimality means a Pareto point is not dominated by any other point in all objectives. Then the result of solving a MO problem is a Pareto set. Each point in Pareto set represents a specific trade-off among different objectives. We have the formal definition as such. In this particular example, the X are the Spark parameters to be set. Collectively, we call them configuration. And F1 is the latency, F2 is the cost. Psi is the model prediction, and we want to minimize them at the same time within these constraints. There are some existing MIMO algorithms. However, targeting the cloud environment will have some new requirements. For example, high efficiency, good coverage, and consistency. As we can see, 
weight sum has poor coverage issue. In this example, it can only find four different Pareto points, while the other algorithms can find much more. The next one is a result generated by an evolutionary algorithm, NSGA2. When we ask it to produce 30 and 40 Pareto points respectively, we can see that the shapes of the frontiers vary a lot, which is undesired. Now we come to the technical details of our progressive frontier construction. First, we have some notations. Reference points means achieves optimal uh, result for a single objective. Utopia and Nadia point are the best worst possible. And so this space the volume of the rectangle. And we have this middle point probe procedure. Uh, now we present them one by one. So first, <coughs> in our example, we have the latency and the cost. So we find the two reference points. And then by these two reference points, we construct the utopia and Nadia point. After that, we have the initial box. Then we have the constrained optimization problem, which means we use the middle point probe. After that, we construct this uh, constraint optimization problem, which we want to find the best cost performance given these two constraints. And after solving it, we have the point F1. After that, we can see that the points in the red part is dominated by F1, and the points in the blue part dominates F1. So these two parts can be safely disregarded. Then we check the volume, aka the uncertain space of the two white box, select the larger one to explore next. We can continue this procedure to find more points. We also have some formal results regarding the progressive frontier algorithm. In 2D case, we're guaranteed to find all the Pareto points if they are finite. In a high dimensional case, we're guaranteed to find a subset of Pareto optimal points. We also have other algorithmic components. The PFAS and the PFAP are two approximate the version of the PF. S stands for the sequential, P stands for the parallel. Our MOGD solver can solve the constraint optimization problem efficiently. We also have the utopia nearest is to select one Pareto point based on its distance to the utopia point. Weight the utopia nearest is to take into consideration of the user preference. Now we come to the experiment part. First, we compare our algorithm with other MO algorithms. This result is so for one job. We can see that we have a uh, our PFAPPFAS algorithm. We also have the constraint normal weight sum evolutionary and the two version of the Bayesian based MO algorithms. The X axis is the time elapsed. The Y axis is the uncertainty space starting from 100%. As we can see, PFAP is the first start to reduce the uncertainty space. Then we have the Summarize the results over 258 batch jobs in which we use latency and cost as objectives and we use TPC XBB benchmark data. In all cases, PFAP starts to run within one second. Second to it is evolutionary algorithm, which takes five seconds to get the initial result. And we know that evolutionary is inconsistency. Then we do the end-to-end -end comparison with Autotune, which is a state-of-the-art performance tuning work. We summarize the results for 12 jobs with two different preferences. When the user has equal weight for the latency and the cost, PFAP achieves dominant performance, 26 less running time and 3% and of less cost. When the user has strong preference on latency, 9 to 1, Autotune achieves only 6% reduction of total running time, while PFAP is 35%. Overall, PFAP uses more cost to achieve better latency performance. That is exactly the user desired. To sum up, we have developed UDO, a multi-objective optimizer. It outperforms existing MO methods. It outperforms Autotune. In future, we would like to extend UDA to support a pipeline of analytics tasks. 
and uh, incorporate more complex and robust models. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Questions?